We've talked about the structure in the book of Revelation, the Hebrew structure, which is obviously there, and how the letter corresponds to the chapter. Here on the left hand, on the top, you have the, uh, the Hebrew letter, which is Mem. It's the 13th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And here's the ancient pictograph. It's believed, we, we know that uh, the Hebrew, that these characters that are used today were not used as early as we can trace back. But we can see that there was some of these ancient pictographs that were used by the common people. That represents the, the letter Mem as, low, as well as that one. Okay, but this was more ancient. Anyway, the, each letter had meaning. And so we have here, in Hebrew writings, the letter Mem literally means water, mighty, massive, Many, like chaos, like the deep. When I say that, if you open your Bible to the first chapter, you see Genesis 1-1, and the earth is covered completely in water. Many people believe, and I believe they're right, uh, or I agree with this, is that Satan fell between verse 1 and verse 2 and destroyed the earth, the perfect earth that was made in God that is restoring that earth. But anyway, it's, it's called a time of great chaos. In fact, the word used in Hebrew is tohu and bohu, which means completely chaotic and destroyed. But anyway, uh, that, that's the words that are translated. Uh, says it, when, in the world, in the, in the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. That those words are tohu and bohu, are without form and void. But anyway, so the letter represents. Water, first of all, and you can see that, you know, that pictograph actually looks like waves in water, right? And it also represents chaos. Uh, over here, we, we're just uh, jogging your memory. The first thing we see when we get in there is the beast rising up out of the water, right? And even in Daniel's beast, they rose up from the, the water. But last week we talked about the serpent coming after Israel and out of his mouth came forth water to drown them. The water, we said, represents... It's a couple things it represents. Number one, primarily, it represents a whole bunch of false teaching. And Jesus said there would be a bunch of false prophets at the time. And we said that Satan was a liar from the beginning. Anything comes out of his mouth has to be the opposite of living water. It has to be deadly water. But it also, I believe it also represents a bunch, a, a whole fleet. Like um, you could see uh, the word, you could see um, the, the meaning of the word means massive and mighty, not only water. It's a whole massive and mighty troops that Antichrist sends after Israel trying to get her. But it says the ground opened up and swallowed them. And they made it to Petra. And when they get to Petra, they're safe and the Antichrist can't touch them. But anyway, these scriptures kind of echo the structure of this letter here. And you can see it. First, it talks about the water as a beast rises up out of the sea. Then when we get down here in verse 2, it says the dragon gave him his power, his seat, great authority. What do you think happens when, when, the, when the dragon gives him this authority and this power and his seat? The earth becomes more chaotic than it ever has been. And the power that's loose that's loose is like is like this water that comes forth chaotic uh, uh water mighty and massive. And verse three says uh, uh that they wondered at the beast and down there in verse four, who is like the beast, who is able to, to make war against him? In other words, such massive power is demonstrated in this chapter. The, the Gospel of John, since John is the same author as he as the uh, the gospel of john as the book of revelation it's it's uh, interesting that the same structure exists and here in uh, chapter 13 in the gospel of john we see that it's uh, it's covering a, a period of when jesus is at the at this last supper and it says in verse uh, chapter 13 verse 2 on the upper right hand corner it says and supper being ended the devil having now put into the heart of judas iscariot simon's son to betray him what happened the devil put into judas's heart something it's the same thing that happens in revelation chapter 13 with the antichrist some type of satanic agency comes into this Antichrist and he becomes the Antichrist, right? 
So let's read a little further. He also has a reference to the water, by the way. Jesus says, He that is washed needeth not to be wa- uh, washed his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all, or all of you. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore, he said, You are not all clean. And when Jesus had thus said, He was troubled in the spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, One of you shall betray me. And when he said that, he knew who it was. But he wasn't really, it wasn't just Judas who betrayed him. Watch this. Verse 27, when we drop down to John 27, same chapter, it says, And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Judas had some agent of Satan, or Satan himself, if you want to read it that way, but some agent of Satan entered into Jesus. He became, for all intents and purposes, he was possessed. But it really is the same thing that we have going on with Antichrist in Revelation 13, because Antichrist has 42 months, and then when he gets the, the, the death wound... He comes, what raises him from the dead is that, that uh, beast from the bottomless pit comes up. He's the, he's the one that comes and inhabits the Antichrist. And remember it said of him, he was and is. When was he? He was in the time of Judas. In fact, isn't it interesting that the only, there's two people that are called son of perdition. One is the Antichrist. The other one is Judas. And the word in Greek is son of Apollyon. And the one who rises is Apollyon. So I believe that this same spirit did. He was when he entered into Judas. Of course, when Judas hung himself, he was, he, he was taken, he was locked up in prison until it was his time again. So anyway... You got to realize Judas didn't do this in his own power. This agency, this spirit, I believe the same one, Apollyon, that went into, uh, comes into Antichrist, the same one that went into Judas. In fact, if you look at church history, there were many writings in the early church history that many people thought Judas was going to come back from the dead and be the Antichrist. You can see that it's all recorded in early church history. Because they could see it in the scripture. They just, they couldn't put it together, but they could see it's the same one who betrayed him is the Antichrist and is coming back. And they couldn't put the details on it, but now we can. He's the son of Apollyon. Verse 28 says, Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake unto him. Remember, the word is chaos. Chaos or confusion, right? The letter, chaos and confusion. So you can see how that's um, uh, saturated within the, the 13th chapter of John. Also remember the number 13, right? Which we started with. Another 13 is evil. And here it talks about anti or the, the same spirit that entered Judas, uh, which it says here Satan entered into him. Just because it says Satan entered into him does not mean literally it was Satan. If, if he sent his agent agent to him or agency to him and that happened, it's still Satan gets credit for everything. If a demon enters into you, someone would say, you, you got the devil, right? Or if pastor's over here on Saturday working with somebody, he's casting out the devil. He would say, yeah, this person had Satan really bad, right?